Yo, this is the Heady Metal Show with Jeff Olson, and my guest is Woodrow Woody Weatherman of Corrosion of Conformity. Hello, hello. Hello, Woody. Ah, this is great to talk with you. I uh, had a great chat many months ago with Jimmy Bauer. Oh, awesome, man. What what a good young man. I'm going to tell you what, dude. He, uh, <laughs> man, Bauer, Bauer, uh, he, he filled in, of course, for Mullen for, for uh, a, a whole tour there for us, man. Did a fantastic job, you know. It's uh, tough shoes to fill, man, but he, he did a great job. Oh, I hear you. He is uh, quite a guy. Great, great Southern hospitality kind of man. It was, uh, <laughs> there'll be some, definitely some links as we uh, talk you through here. I got about 18, 20 questions prepared. Cool, man. Before you get started, man, I just, I, I got, I got to tell you, dude, I'm a monster fan, and I'm, I'm kind of a little, a little nervous, man, chatting with you, dude. Just, what? <laughs> for, for many, many, many years, dude, I've, I've been a giant, giant fan of yours, and, uh, you know, so I, I've been, I've been uh, waiting anxiously to get to talk to you again on, on the, on the phone here, dude. So I just, I want to let you know I'm stoked, man. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. That, that's really funny, man. <laughs> well, now I'm not as nervous. <laughs> that's great <laughs> did you like the Allagash triple that Sam and Patrick one brought you to the clutch show Man, and COC I, show I, I gotta tell you that is the most delicious brews I've had in many many moons if not ever and I've actually I stockpiled one <laughs> I've got a stout like a <laughs> one of the big ones the, the big giant ones with the cork in it yeah. I've got it in here in the fridge right now I brought it all the way back from Maine <laughs> and uh I'm I'm saving it, man. I'm 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 uh. Every time I open the fridge, I, I stare at it and go, hmm, now or not now. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to resist, man. But I gotta tell you, man. Uh, thanks so much for having those guys bring it down there. Just delicious, and and uh, all the guys enjoyed it, man. Oh, that's great. Well, let's go like this. Promotionally, let's talk about the February twenty eighth, twenty twelve, uh, new record, Corrosion of Conformity. <laughs> And yeah, is this your eighth album? It's yeah. They tell me it's the eighth studio album. We got a we got a live one in there and a couple of little EPs and whatnot thrown in for good measure. But but yeah, man. You know, it's uh, after thirty years. You know, I would I would like to have thirty albums like like the old guys used to do. They used to come out <laughs> with an album every year. But <laughs> I guess it doesn't really work out that way. But but it, it is our eighth studio record. Yeah. Any guests on this, or is it the three piece, or is Pepper around on it? Any, or is there? What's it like? It's 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 the three of us. It's it's Mike Dean, Reed Mullen, and and myself. And uh, no no guest appearances this this record, which uh, we have had a a, a couple of uh, famous guests in, in the past on on past albums. Uh, uh, you know, uh, back in the day, but uh, this time it was just it was just us. We just went in there and. And and did it to it, you know. We uh, we were in a, a famous musician's a studio to do it. We, we went out to Dave Grohl's place uh, out in L.A., but uh, but he he didn't uh, make a guest appearance on the record. I, I wish he would have. That would have been pretty cool. But uh, but nah, just just the three of us, man. Well, I'll tell you, I have so many favorites, man. But I go moody with the albums. But I really love even some of the ballads that happen. They 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 sound so. Right at home like you know like something almost story like uh almost folk like which is uh incredible uh right, well, well you're, you're 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 familiar with that from from your work uh, with, with trouble and whatnot but a, a lot of times on those albums when you when you've got the such intense songs it, it really it really makes the album flow especially uh well, well for us it, it always has to, to throw in something off the wall you know and then like break it down for a moment or two before you jump back in and start hitting people on the head with a sledgehammer you know yeah sure <laughs> sure let them take a short rest <laughs> one of them to me appeals i don't know if it's on deliverance that's just gorgeous and it sounds capo or it's high pitched yeah you know and, and we we have experimented on some on some crazy stuff um, uh uh you know, have, there's been a couple of mandolins make appearances uh, through the years, but uh, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. But, but yeah, there's if you hear it, it it's it likely it might have happened because we've done some experimenting. Uh, now here on the new one, I didn't really get into any of the crazy instruments. I pretty much stayed with the 
with the six string guitar as as did Mike with the four string bass but uh, but we we've never had a, a problem you know if the opportunity arises heck you know jump on a mandolin if you can pull it off you know and then and, and click a couple of a couple of notes off why not man you know we're not scared no, <laughs> not even <laughs> You know, because some people shy away from that stuff, but it's like, hey, you know, the name of the band is Corrosion of Conformity. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> it kind of gives a semi-carte blanche to do, to do whatever, you know. That's great. <laughs> Other than uh, uh, us with trouble, like, now what are we in trouble about, you know? I was right. like, fucking... <laughs> Who forgot the passport? Oh, jeez. You know. Hey, don't hey, don't bring that up. That's <laughs> this happens. That brings back some bad memories. <laughs> oh man. Who forgot the passport? That's a nightmare. Yeah, it, it, it's a nightmare that comes true every once in a while. But. <laughs> oh man. COC's hiatuses were brief and occasional. Did you yeah. ever think that you would ever completely stop making music? in any of those breaks or changes in time? No, no, really, seriously, no. Um, and, and admittedly, we have taken too many breaks that were too long. You know, like, uh, we always, I think we always had the intention of like, well, you know, we did a record, we toured on it for a year, and, and we're going to go home and we're going to start working on another record. And it, it, it's almost like rarely does that happen for us. Um, yeah. I don't really know why. I think it. Uh, we all kind of get home and get into our own things for a while, and next thing you know, two or three years has gone by. Sure. And um, but uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, and <laughs> I'm going to stick my neck out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I'll I'll stick my neck out, and I'll say once again something I've said before. We definitely don't plan on taking a, any sort of break after this. I mean, we're we're kind of on a roll and. We're having too much fun to uh, to take one of those three, four, five year breaks. It just it's it, it's not good for us, really. And and I mean, thank goodness we've got fans that'll that'll hang around during that time period and not not totally forget about us. You know, we we don't really have those fly by night fans, which is good. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you though, like it's shorter than the trouble ones, like ten years. And like oh, <laughs> you guys are broken up. Your history, you know, like. Right. That's why I wanted to pull out of that with you guys because it's sometimes it's just the way change goes and it's the way that, you know, time goes by, I think, sometimes. and uh, It does, man. It flies. And the next thing you know, you're like, well, wait a second, man. We need to... And, you know, sometimes during that time, as I'm sure you do too, you, you continue working on music even with your, your, your same band members or whatever. I know, I know that we do, but it just... It takes us a while to get everything back in gear, especially if you're in between record labels or, uh, you know, there's always some sort of circumstance that, you know, but once we have a goal, then we're, 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 we're gone, you know. <laughs> yeah. you know give, give us a deadline and we're, and we're awesome. there, man. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Showing up totally on uh, game day there. You got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a topic. There's been a, you know, this kind of interesting festival requests with bands and it's the the topic is live album sets. Um, what do you think about playing full album sets? Like uh, they'll ask you to do deliverance or they'll ask you to do right. an album. What what's your opinion on that? Well, uh, I've noticed some bands doing that, you know. Um even, even like the Melvins, uh, I, I noticed them doing some stuff in Chicago. I think they had a three or four night stint, and they were doing a different album every night. I think that's awesome. You know, if, if the band's into it and and they've got the material to pull it off, I think it's great. Uh, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, kind of like the last, we, we've been touring the last, uh, you know, say 2010, you know, the summer of 2010 on through 2011, we were doing a bunch of shows. And we were doing, you know, basically pretty much all of the Animosity record because that was the lineup that, uh, you know, the, the, the three-piece lineup, that was our last record we'd really done as a three-piece. But all of that time, we were also including you know, several of the new songs that, that wound up appearing on the new record, you know, so, but, you know, uh, I think, you know, 
I think it's a great idea, man. If, if bands have the material and they and they feel like doing it, why not, man? You know, but I I do see more and more about it now. You know. Yeah. Um. What What do you think you would choose, like, uh, as? A, <laughs> <laughs> what would you choose man. out of all your albums? Right, right. Well, I tell you, if. Uh, if, if if we uh, got back up with Pepper like, like like we did over over the course of this past summer, we we did a couple of festival dates with Down, and uh, he came up and sang. But I mean, it it, it would be fun to, to to choose some of those records and 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 do it in its entirety. And uh, you know, I I think once once the new record settles in, I think we're going to be doing pretty much that whole thing in its entirety on on some of these these upcoming shows we're doing. Great. Well, we can't wait to hear it. So, uh, not very far from now, February twenty eighth, man. Cannot wait. Yeah, man. And we and we kick it off March first. The oh, tour uh, in, in New York City is the first day. Yeah. So, the start of a long, a bunch of long shows, uh, a, a long string of touring. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Well, cool. Cause it good work. You know, it's uh, fun to fun to work. That's a you know, I'm one of those kind of guys. Yeah, me too, man. Wish I was working more. But <laughs> man, me too. Hey, come on, dude. <laughs> I want to see you out there, man. Well, we will. We're just uh, getting it together. You know how that can be. You know, uh, it costs a lot nowadays. So uh, uh, we're just it's working right. it out so those costs aren't so bad. Trouble's lo- rocking right now. They're... Uh, lots of different things, even with different camps, almost like talking about the different albums, different members and changes. Um, wow. There's different ideas, like Ron and Eric, and a lot of people would like to do different things. You have uh, Eric uh, with Blackfinger, you have Ron with Earth and Grave, and then uh, what I'm doing, kind of a weird show at a beer fest. So. Oh, wow. Well, man, this is getting me excited. This this is news to me. <laughs> this, this is good. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a weird duo, uh, and it's it's uh, retrograde, and it's really fun. So it's kind of creepy sounding, but at times it's got you know some power. Uh, so it's 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 fun. It's it's cool music, sort of Pink Floyd, sort of Trouble. So it's are, it's are hard. You, it's like, drumming? Are, I drum, are you drumming sing. On this? I'll grab uh, I grab a Fernandez with a sustainer bar on it, vibra bar, and I'll do some sound effects things, and we'll move into kind of an improv thing with that, and uh, it's just some cool cool stuff. And I'm definitely drumming uh, all the way. Is the what I mainly do and sing. And uh, wow. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for that too, then, man. This is this is better and better news. I'm I'm getting stoked, man. <laughs> and speaking of Ron, man, I, I ran into. Of course, I, I run into Ron all the time. You know, he he pops up. You know, Ron, man, he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Holton. But I saw him this uh, this past year out at the uh, at the Roadburn uh, Fest. Was awesome. actually the last time I saw him, and and uh, and he and his wife were having a having a blast and. It's just always fun to see him, man. He's, he's such a such a good guy. He is the most peaceful guy, and his wife Carol, and uh, uh, just great, great people. Really, oh, man. They, they truly are. We called him up when Armando from uh, Saint Vitus passed this uh, right. last uh, thank two Thanksgivings ago, and we. Yeah call him up to do the I was just going to interview actually Henry which was kind of ironic Henry from St. Vitus who's filled in right. you know Armando's shoes but uh yeah wow I tell you man well you know I I have I have really fond memories of <clears throat> many many moons ago uh of doing some touring with Vitus uh, way way back and yeah <clears throat> and just watching Armando he was such a giant <laughs> presence man and he had, he had Symbol stands that looked like they were like eight foot tall, you know. And he would do this just massive. I mean, his arm would just reach up and crash these. You know, it was just uh, just an incredible uh, visual. You know, to to be able to watch that. But, yeah, uh, there's a running gag with him, Barry Stern from Trouble, and. Right. Uh, a lot of guys from Trouble. We uh, some of his groove sounded like the Charging Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> So true, man. So true. <laughs> oh man, rest in peace, man, Armando. No doubt, no doubt, mighty Armando. Some personal questions. 
not that sure, personal, man, sure. but uh, this is always kind of fun because listeners out there, you know, it's like cool to get maybe a deep with a person that we call. And uh, how did you get started in music before you were in bands like No Label or the, you know, your bands, No Labels and uh, right. Corrosion of Conformity? Right. Well, I tell you, you know, my, my dad uh, was, was a giant influence there because he's, you know, I, I grew up with him and, and he's, um, he's a musician as well. And, and he was always into like the bluegrass and the old time stuff and used to drag me to all these like a bluegrass festivals when I was a little kid, you know, wow. and at the time I was like, I, I kind of balked at it a little bit, you know, when you're five years old and you're getting drugged to fiddler's conventions or whatever you're, you're kind of pissed <laughs> off about but now looking back you know it's like wow that was awesome you know that was really really cool and uh you know so i, I guess i caught it from him you know he, excellent he, you know he, he bought me my first guitar when i was uh whatever you know 14 or 15 or whatever and you know, really or acoustic. Up on it. Yeah, he he started me off on an acoustic, and that didn't last long. <laughs> I, I, I was like, wait a second, uh, this, this doesn't work for Iron Man, you know? Come on, dude. <laughs> you got to hook me up with something that makes noise. Come on, dude. <laughs> so that so that that was quickly traded in for uh for something that that made a little more a little more racket. But you know, I. Uh, I, I, I definitely credit the old man for, for giving me the bug. And, um, you know, he's still at it, man. He's, he's kind of moved on a little bit. He's, he's more into kind of doing some weird jazz and stuff now. But uh, he's a multi-instrumentalist. He, he plays uh, everything from like a hammered dulcimer to, to like a saxophone and, Great. you know, the flute and stuff. Yeah, so he's, he's into all kind of stuff. He sure. still is, you know. The, so, wow, that's great. And yeah, so he's totally still cool. going at this. Still going at it, man. Yeah. Uh, any brass? He's just uh, woodwinds and uh, and uh, and strings for him. He and he just keeps playing. I mean, does he perform? He does, man. You know, he he he's got a, a group of friends, and they uh, they basically get together in the basement and do a lot of jamming. But every once in a while, they get out and you know get on the get on the small stage somewhere and, and tear it up. He he loves it. I never <laughs> knew that, Woody. That yeah. is just amazing. And, and he's, you know, the, my folks and, and like, say, for instance, Reed's, but they, they've always been really big supporters of, of our music, too. They've always come out to the shows. And, you know, back in the day, they were, they were the ones that endured us, you know, jamming in the basement or in the garage or <laughs> wherever they took us. You know, they, they, they put up with us when we were kids, and, and, uh, and they still do now that we're, you know, grown men there. They, they still come and see us, you know, so that's cool. That is fantastic. In this past, uh, in the D.C. area, so to speak, or the wonderful <coughs> Carolinas, uh, Virginia, uh, I'll tell you what a set of great musicians. There's a lot in the United States. There's a lot of areas that just blow my mind. Uh, D.C. area stands out to me you know, very deeply from when we came to Baltimore in the 80s. But right. uh, on that... Oh, there was, there was a lot of great doom and, and just great rock that came out of out of the D.C. Baltimore area. I yeah. mean, we all know that. You like know, thinking of Victor of Griffin band. and, uh, you know, uh, Victor Griffin and uh, just different Death Row and Pentagram and different bands and all these. It, it just seemed there was a great movement happening wino and, and the obsessed and wino, the, the yeah. list goes on and on yeah 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 it's just great did you meet uh dave Grohl in that time period when you were younger like with the the scream or anything like that any of those cats yeah, yeah absolutely i mean you know of course our our geographic uh proximity you know allowed us to we used to go up there all the time to see shows i mean that was where we went to see punk rock shows and, 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 and metal shows. And, um, you know, cause Raleigh at the time was a, was a fairly small town, you know, it was a small city and, and, um, sure. so, so traveling up to DC or even to Richmond was, was a big deal to get to see all these bands. And, um, yeah, of, co of course, Grohl was, was part of that scene and, um, and Reed had a small record label and then wound up kind of, uh, amongst others, you know, putting out one of uh, this band, Dane Bramage, which was one of Grohl's 
early early bands uh, put out their record, you know, and I think uh, uh, Reed and, and Dave have maintained a friendship uh, through the years, you know, pretty tight friendship, and that was, uh, you know, one of the one of the ways that we got hooked up, of course, going going out to a studio and stuff, but. But, I mean, you know, there were so many great musicians from up there and, and such a scene that, that evolved out of it. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that just had, had a lot of meaning for a lot of people. So it was, it was nice to see that, you know, in action and, and being born, you know. Sure. Dur- you know, during that time coming out of Chicago, we were so surprised um, that we, it just blew our socks off. You know, we had come through we met many of the towns when you travel for the first time, our, our first tours, our first East Coast tours, and then here we get into that area, the D.C. area, and we couldn't believe it. Uh, people right. actually bought our record. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was yeah. like, what the... <laughs> <laughs> Look at this place. <laughs> You go on tour and you sell a record, man. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember Wino was talking about, you know, that fact, too, is that uh, just over time, uh, the privilege for any of us to get to still play, we never maybe thought it would ever be that way. We might have thought it would have been like most people in bands. Uh, and and here we are. What uh, We're so fortunate to, to be able to do our art. And we should it, it is so true. And, <laughs> and you know, Mike Dean has, has spoke about that recently. You know, people will ask you, well, you know, you've been around for 30 years. What are some of the differences? And it's like, well, now we, we actually really appreciate it. We don't, you know, right. you don't take it for granted anymore because, you, you know, it's, it's like you're, you're so lucky to be able to do this. And it's great to actually realize how lucky you are because it, it even means even more, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, where you're at now, down in that area, do you hang out uh, when you're off tour, relaxing and uh, working on the next thing or what what you're doing? What is life like down there? Uh, Do you hang out with different people, have cookouts? And uh, uh, what's your family life like uh, right now, your personal family life? Well, I I tell you, uh, Mike... And and uh, and Reed are still living in Raleigh. Wow! And of course, I still have all my family down there. But I actually live two hours away up in the up in Virginia, up in the mountains. Awesome! And so I'm kind of like Blue out Ridge in the Mountains. Ship, man. Yeah, I'm in the Blue Ridge Mountains, right right on the foothills. And uh, to tell you the truth, I have some land up here, and I raise cows and. Uh, uh, I've got other animals, you know, donkeys and goats, and I just, I get up here and I have a blast, man. That's what we saw uh, on that tractor then, so do you I raise... I got the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> do you raise milkers, or uh, what do you have? Holsteins? Yeah, i got a little bit of both. I, 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 I've got, uh, I, I do have a, a jersey that's like, sort of like the uh, the family milk cow, you know, whenever she's she's had a calf, she's in milk, but... Uh, and a I Jersey's was, uh, a smaller cow? Is that a smaller, or, the, or am I thinking of Guernsey's? Well, you know, the, the Jersey is a little smaller, um, uh, especially the old, the old tiny Jerseys. They, they've bred some of the cows bigger now, but uh, but they're you know they're the old they're they're an old breed, an old heritage breed. So they are. Uh, if you get one of the older lines, they are kind of smaller like the, compared to like this big black and white cows the holsteins the holsteins are really large. Yeah, yeah yeah those things are big man yeah but uh i you know mostly i i keep some uh some charlet and angus and herford across uh, cattle and they're, they're they're like a beef breed you know yeah those are your steers so then you'll uh fill yeah, the freezers man. and uh <laughs> that's awesome dude i understand all that i used to milk cows before i worked in wine and uh champagne and beer and uh ah. oh yeah okay man well good so, so you know the routine man i don't i don't actually do that whole milking thing because that's a like lot that. of work Twice let me tell day, you yeah the whole the whole getting up at three in the morning and milking <laughs> twice a day i don't think i could do that <laughs> it's three in the morning and it's uh three in the afternoon depending on the cow so what is like <laughs> yes sir yeah I, uh, that, that might not fit in with me but uh but the beef cows i mean you know the story with that they they pretty much hang out in the in the fields and eat grass and, and drink water and, and that's about it yep that's that's excellent <laughs> wow yeah, man. We should uh, 
trade stakes for beer then. We're going to have to. Hey. Uh, we got something yeah. going here. <laughs> yeah, man, that's, that's a, that is a fantastic trade. I can, I can endorse that 10,000%, man. <laughs> <laughs> Our, well, what we do, you'd be interested in that, actually, uh, Woody, is we uh, take our spent grain, both our liquid uh, yeast grains, liquids go to Angus, some Angus farm, and then our spent malt from the brewing process constantly gets pumped out in uh, like 40-foot dump truck semis, and it goes as organic material to feed steers, too. So wow. It's pretty wild how that process works. So. It's, it's it's wild, and, and I'm I'm happy to see you guys using everything instead of uh, just simply throwing it away or whatever. I mean that makes perfect sense. Almost like recycling, you know. It is. It's uh, kind of a concept that's creeped up, you know, after the '70s with ecology, you know, and everyone putting their heads together and thinking it's probably a better way. You actually save money doing this kind of stuff too, so it's you don't have to pay oh. pay money for throwing stuff away, you know. Right, right, and and, and also uh, it kind of works for some of these guys that are using the um, uh, like vegetable oil to to run their cars and stuff. You know, yep. they go pick it up at at uh, you know said uh, fast food restaurant, yep. and it saves saves the fast food restaurant some sort of disposal fee, and the the guy who's driving the car gets gets his his fuel for free. So it's a win win, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a diesel fuel. That stuff. That's wild stuff. Hey, you know uh, another uh, thing about the uh, the Allagash Brewery. Uh, <laughs> I actually found a, uh, a, a a specialty beer store in Raleigh, and they have they uh, sell your your beer there. Oh yeah, our guy Less. I call him Less is More. <laughs> okay. Well, I I found it there, and I was we we were just uh, filming. Uh, uh, a video down in Raleigh this, this past week, and I popped in that little store because I, I was thirsty. You know, I'm in that surprise. <laughs> I know that's a shocker to your listeners that I was I was a little thirsty, but uh, but I was like, man, I, you know, uh, I've got to find find that delicious beer that I found in Maine. You know, <laughs> and, and it's like behold, we're doing a giant it. commercial, and it should be it says Woody. <laughs> Weatherman from COC, everybody. <laughs> Not Allagash. Yep. Right, right. Funny, That's though. okay, though, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, you know. But uh, <laughs> I just, I just wanted to tell you that that they had it there, and, and there, and it, it's there. So I'm, I'm happy, and uh, I'm, I'm sure all of Raleigh, North Carolina, is happy as well. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I like uh, one of the things. Some people are hot and cold about these interviews, but. Well, it's, yeah. a, it's a talk show, and uh, that's the way it should be, man. It's kind of turning that way, and uh, the radio that you're on now is internet radio. Let's ask this: What was it like working with uh, Warren Haynes on the uh, song "Star" or "Stare Too Long"? Sorry, "Stare Too Stare Long." Too long. Uh, man, you know. Of course, we, we're we're all giant Warren Haynes fans, and and I've seen him perform with the Allman Brothers, you know, many many times, and you know, my jaw dropped whenever we we kind of just ask him about it, and and I guess he's a he's a fellow North Carolinian, so maybe that was part of it. But he said, yeah, you know, I'll come over and and, and drop a track on that, and we were like, oh my goodness, you know, what in the world? And lo and behold, man, he shows up. He just walks in with a guitar and, and plugs it into an amp that was there in the studio. And, I mean, five minutes later, he was laying down unbelievable riffs. He's, he's one of those guys that uh, is so unstoppable and knows so much about music and everything. It was, my jaw was, was you know, rattling on the floor watching him, you know, because it was so effortless for a guy like that, you know? Yeah. And he, he did a fantastic job, of course. You know, <laughs> make the rest of us sound like crap. You know, <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's, it's it's a monster talent like that is is just an, an amazing to watch, especially in the studio. You know. Yeah, that must have been a blast. Yeah, it was, man, and and I I, I cherish that that 
fact that he came and did that for us, you know, it was it was awesome. That's cool. Any other collaborations along your memory in history? I know you've done a lot, so of people that were really fun, uh, maybe even James, you know, James Hatfield or anybody else that uh, might not have been mentioned that people don't know about that we could uh, that was fun to collaborate on corrosion of conformity records. Yeah, well, you know, uh, the, of course, Hetfield. Came, we, we were we were in New York doing uh, doing that album with the um, what was the name of that song? Not, not Broken Man, but uh, da, 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 I can hear the song right now. It's like we have primitive times or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it was just Hetfield coming over as a friend, you know, and doing it, and 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 m- most of the uh of course the music was already on tape and then some of the lyrics or whatnot some of the vocals but uh he came in and joined in with pepper and this sort of traded off on stuff on that thing and man or ash man or ash that's it yeah <laughs> it's like i can remember the chorus but i couldn't remember the name of the song man <laughs> or ash, yeah, he, he came. <laughs> it's hilarious i know man <laughs> it's that allagash kicking in again man <laughs> no it's that's just the normal <laughs> thing yeah, kicking right. in. That's pretty oh, funny. Man, I, it's, the, it's the old age, dude. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there, there's been a few other buddies that have dropped by. But, you know, uh, playing, playing with people that know what they're doing, especially if they just show up, and it's really, if it's all about having a good time, that makes a big difference. And people, people that know what they're doing basically show up to have a good time. And, and they don't, you know, people don't show up nervous or whatever, you know. I mean, I I might be a guy that might show up nervous. I don't know, because sometimes I don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> I try to at least fake it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Eric just, I just interviewed Eric, because he's got his uh, a band, Eric Wagner from Trouble. Yeah. He's got a band called Blackfinger that's really good. I heard that, yes. Yeah, and he yeah. has said... If it's, you know, if it's not fun, then what are you doing? Why are you doing it? <laughs> like, it's just Words that simple. <laughs> that, is, that is so true. That is, he, he hit the nail on the head, man. If it's not fun, what, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Well, hey, let's shift some gears here. I like to do this on the show. Um, these last two kind of... Uh, situations are kind of the one that sets up the artist we're going to throw you uh, uh in a game here called apples and oranges Uh-oh. <laughs> it's five questions <laughs> it's just, i'm scared already dude. <laughs> <laughs> well at least I, I didn't put you on match game i did that uh jimmy bauer and pentagram and all right here we go you ready to play apples and oranges yeah hit it hit me with it man all right question number one Beatles, Stones, or Kinks? Holy moly. Ah, Stones for me, of course. Awesome. Wow. Stones, Stones. Cool. Question two. Beer or wine? Beer. This is easy, man. I like this. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing against the wine drinkers out there, you know. I've been known to sample a little wine here and there, but come on, beer, man. Heck. This one's always a fun one. Question 13. I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble one of these days for this one. Betsy Bitch, Lita Ford, or Joan Jett? Ooh, wow. Holy moly. That's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe just Lita Ford for the attitude, you know? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one you might dig. Chevy, Ford, or Dodge? Dude, it's it's Chevy all the way for me. <laughs> Gotta have it. I mean, I you know, hey, it's it, it's Chevy and Harley. All right, they, they go hand in hand for me, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What was uh, I remember asking uh, Chris from the drummer of Autopsy? Yeah, I go. What was your first uh, car? that you were legally allowed to drive. So I should ask you that question. It, it, it was a 68 Impala. All right. 68 Impala with a, with a 327 turbo fire in it. And uh, my granddad, <laughs> uh, it was like a really, it was, all, it was already old and worn out, but, but the, uh, my, my granddad uh, gave it to me. 
like whenever uh, I turned 16 or whatever. And he gave me that thing, and it was a monster. It had been his, you know, and he had about wore it out. But uh, we, we called it the Blue Whale. It was giant. It was only two door, but it was like 40 foot long, it seemed like to me at the time. And uh, it had the big giant seat in the front that just slid all the way across. It didn't have bucket seats, you know. And so if you took a corner too quick, I mean, if you didn't hang on the steering wheel pretty good, you'd, you'd wind up on the passenger door, you know. <laughs> But, I, you know, ever since then, I mean, it's, it's Chevy all the way. That's awesome. That's just really cool to hear. Wow. All right, yeah, and man. lastly, question uh, five here in Apples and Oranges. Early COC or new COC? Ooh, wow. <laughs> well, I mean, new COC, you know, because it's, it's kind of the same to me. It's sort of like we were... We were trying to play those riffs in early COC. We just couldn't quite pull it off just yet. Because really, early COC was basically just a bunch of sped-up Black Sabbath riffs. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not even joking. That's, that's really true. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's what it was, man. It was just sped-up, black, simplified Black Sabbath riffs. <laughs> that's and, awesome. uh, It's kind of the same thing now. <laughs> <laughs> So we stay true to our form, man. <laughs> that is cool. Cool. Well, lastly here, this is a question I ask everybody. It's pretty much the main question that uh, uh, is important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is important, but this one's real important. And it, it's saying we're on an internet uh, questionnaire here where the whole world can tap in. And more and more people are tapping into these uh these things that that's happening here with these questions and the question is the heady question is what would you like to say to the entire world at this given time holy moly uh well i gotta tell you the year is 2012 so let's party like madmen and have a good time because the year is Hi, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ignore the naysayers, man. It's it's, uh, it's going to be a good year, and there's going to be many years to follow. But let's just have a good time. That's great. That's a great answer. That's uh, so many people answer that question differently, and uh, some people answer it quick like that, <laughs> and and some people, Uli Roth took fifteen minutes, and I. Oh, wow. I thought he was going to be done in 10, you know, like, uh, I don't have much time or whatever, you know. But he didn't, he never said that. Uh, right. It was, uh, and you, uh, like all of, I don't know what number of interviews this is, but you of uh, at least 40 to 45 right now, everyone has contributed, like, great answers right there. Because why wouldn't they? You know, it's what's ever coming out of their whole spirit their whole, you know, what they need to say at that time. It's I love that question. So, <laughs> a good question, man, because I mean, it makes you think. You know, <laughs> sometimes, hey, I, you know, sometimes it might have took me fifteen minutes. It just depends on the day. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I had it at this time. <laughs> right, you hit, it, you hit it right on the on the spot, man. <laughs> Awesome uh, to talk with you. Hey, y'all, this is Woodrow from Corrosion Conformity, and you're listening to the Heady Metal Show, Jeff Olsen. You know what question I need to ask and insert it at, yeah, at the very beginning? I would like to do this again, I'm just, uh, and it's not a problem. I just go back and I edit this anyways. Yeah. Um, what brought you to the point of almost creating a self-title at this point? Uh, calling the new record corrosion of conformity well you know and, and a lot of people have, have kind of asked that you know well is it is it sort of does it mean this is uh you know the best record you've ever done or the best record you ever will do or you know what exactly does that mean and whenever mike my dean uh, brought up that i was like well you know uh this is kind of like our 30th year as a band and we're sort of reverting back to kind of the original guys or whatever, you know, the original three guys that started it. And uh, I thought it was a good idea, too. You know, I, I definitely don't think it's our, you know, absolutely going to be our definitive work because I think there's better things 
coming in the future even, you know. I mean, we always try to improve, and it's... Uh, I always look as, 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 at every album as the best that we can do at that time, you know. And, and 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 so that's... I think this record is the best that we can do right now, and I think we'll, we'll try to improve on it next time, and... You know, but it's uh, people have have asked. You know, why uh, you know why now do a, a self titled album? Well, why not? We haven't done one yet. We got to do one sometime. You know. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>